Are you wanting to grow big broccoli heads this year? Or maybe you just haven't had success in the years past. I'll be going over all the important things you need to know about growing broccoli and how to prevent problems. This video is packed full of good gardening advice all the way to the end. There are a few reasons why your broccoli may not be heading up, or maybe you're getting small heads or it's just bolting prematurely. Timing and temperature is key to getting our broccoli to head up. But transplant quality and watering is a major part of getting our broccoli to form those nice big heads. So let's dive in to getting our broccoli off to a good start. Broccoli is a cool season crop that's usually grown in the spring and the fall. Excessive summer heat will cause it to bolt. Bolting is just when it grows a long stem with a little head and it flowers. Timing and temperature go hand in hand when planting out broccoli. It's suggested that you plant broccoli two to three weeks before your last frost for most areas. This is especially true for areas that have cold winters and mild summers. Here in our region, we're a zone eight, and I like to plant my transplants out between February 15th and the end of March. This allows it enough time to produce a head before we get too warm. But on those cold nights, I actually have to really monitor the temperatures because if we stay at those 32 degrees for several hours, it's a good idea to cover that broccoli because they're just tender and they can really be damaged early. So I just use a frost blanket over it. Now if we drop into the 20 degrees, then I double that layer up just to give them that added protection. Broccoli can take 50 to 85 days to reach full maturity. So if I were to plant my broccoli out in April or May and our temperatures are already in the 90s, then this just causes the broccoli to stress out and not produce a head. It really thrives in those temperatures that are between 65 and 75 degrees. So you really have to think ahead and plant accordingly to your region. One of the most important things that I found over the years of planting broccoli is start with a healthy transplant. Now that seems really obvious, but there's some things that you really want to look for. You don't want an old plant. And one way that you can tell is to pop these little guys up out of their cell and look at their root system. If there's a lot of roots and you don't see much soil and you see a lot of those roots kind of circling around in that soil and they aren't white, then it's probably an older plant and it's not as healthy. You also want to look at the leaf system. A younger plant will have four to five leaves and that's the perfect time to be buying your transplants to put out into your garden. You also want to look to make sure that these aren't dry because if they've been dried out too many times then this can stress the plant as well. Both of these things can cause that broccoli not to produce a good head and it'll just go to seed right away when you bring it home and put it in the ground. You can easily start your broccoli transplants indoors at home. They're one of the easier starts to do. The seeds germinate really quick and this way you can ensure a healthier transplant and make sure that your timing is just right for when you want to plant them out and that you don't end up with an old transplant. If you need help on learning how to start your seeds then you can go to our indoor seed starting series videos for more information. Broccoli is a sun loving crop. It will do best if it has eight hours of sun a day. It can grow in six hours, but it doesn't really do well in less than that. It starts to get leggy, long stemmed, and it never produces a very big head. Brassica crops, including the broccoli, have pretty good sized roots. They usually can go down about 18 inches. So we want to amend our soil well, and we want it to be very draining and loose soil. If our soil is compacted, the brassica crops have heavy tops, and if they can't have a nice long root system, then they can topple over because their root system will stay shallow. So we want to make sure that we have good loose soil so that they can support a good system, a root system, so that they can support that big top growth that they get. You're going to want to amend your beds really well with some well-rotted, good quality compost because the quality really goes a long way with your garden beds. And I like to put about two inches over the top of my soil and just work it in a little bit. And then once I'm done with that, then I'll add some fertilizer in it. And I like the Biofish, it's a 772. It just provides enough nitrogen for the broccoli to get off to a really good start because really it is essentially a leafy green. 
When we take our starts out, we want to be careful not to damage the roots because we don't want any more stress than what needs to be for these little broccoli because anytime we introduce stress or cause problems for plants, then that just sets them back a little bit of time, stresses them, and then that lessens the chance of actually getting a nice big head. And so we'll take these little guys out carefully and then we can plant them about 12 inches apart. You can go just a little bit closer if you want, but you do compromise the size of your broccoli heads. So 12 inches is good, but you could go even a little bit further apart, 15 inches, 18 inches, and then pop in some lettuce plugs right in between those. And as the broccoli grows, it'll actually kind of shade those lettuces as it starts to get warmer and you're just intercropping and getting two crops in one small area. When we plant our broccoli starts, we want to go deeper than the pot that it came in. And so on this one, I'll probably go up another inch or so all the way up to the leaves. And then once I dig my hole, I'll actually firm this right in around the plant. That way it stays in there nice and secure. And I might have to build some soil around it and firm it in again. Broccoli or all brassica crops, they don't like to rock back and forth because their stems are quite fragile. And if you've ever had one that's just randomly died, more than likely it's because the wind has broke its stem or maybe it got damaged when it got planted in the ground. So I'll put this little guy in there. I'll firm it in so that he's good and secure. We're really windy here. And so I like to plant these in diagonals, like a dice of five. And so I'll have these spread out to where they actually create a little bit of support too and they get a little bit bigger. That just helps them to grow strong and healthy. Broccoli likes to stay moist throughout its lifetime while it's in the garden, especially in those early stages. Those early stages is when it's starting to develop the crown. And so if it dries out during those times, there again, it's just getting stressed out again. So make sure after you get them planted that you keep it well watered all the way through its whole life cycle. Broccoli plants are heavy, hungry feeders, and that initial feeding isn't enough to last them throughout their lifespan in the garden. So after three weeks of transplanting, then go ahead and give them a well-balanced, low nitrogen fertilizer. Now, if we give them a high nitrogen fertilizer at this point, that can cause them to have hollow stems, and we definitely don't want that. So I just like to sprinkle it around the base of the plant, and then I give it a little layer of more compost or mulch. That just helps keep that moisture in too. You can add mulch or compost anytime during the growing season. Just don't work it in because you can damage those root systems very easily because they are pretty shallow. When it's time to harvest broccoli, harvest broccoli. We don't want it to start to open up because when it starts to open up, then it quickly goes to flower. And when we harvest it, we can actually take a large portion of this stem. This is what broccoli used to be grown for was just the stem itself and not even the crown. So when you cook it, you can just start that stem off in your steamer or whatever, just a little bit before you do the crowns. That way they're ready at the same time. And when I take this off, I'll go ahead and leave this plant in the ground and it'll send up off these little side shoots of little or heads of broccoli and these are really great little morsels and I'll let it just continue to produce these things and I'll continue to cut until it starts to really slow it gets hot or I just need that space. The last little heads of these broccoli that we have here were planted in late October and we've harvested some of them already and we've had a really mild winter so I haven't even had to cover these and they've been just fine but we're expected low temperatures down into the low 20s and so if I don't harvest these or I don't cover these with a frost blanket, then this can damage those heads and then they won't be any good. This broccoli head here is starting to just kind of open up just a little bit. And so I want to get this harvested pretty quick. Uh, I usually have about a week in the middle of winter time, but come summertime, it's just a matter of a day and this guy will open up and go to flower. This broccoli here is gonna be really good and tasty because he's nice and tight. But even if they go to where they open up a little bit more, there's no reason why you can't eat these. It's not gonna hurt you. They just aren't quite as good. And the best time to harvest these is in the morning because they have the most water content and that makes them taste the best. And once we cut these guys off, the little sprouts come up right here above the stem like this guy right here where we've harvested he's got a bunch of little babies popping up right here and these will just flourish over and over and over and you'll almost have to harvest weekly 
Fluctuating temperatures in the springtime can be really challenging. Growing in mild climates or mild springtime temperatures is much easier and this is why a lot of the brassica crops are grown in the mild areas in California because they have more of an even temperature. Here in southern Utah we shoot up one day and we get hot and then we shoot down and get really cold. These radical changes can cause those broccoli plants to button up and that is just when they shoot up a tall stem and want to flower right away. Way. Let me know in the comments if this has ever happened to you. You can really help with these fluctuations, especially at the cold nighttime temperatures, by just using a frost blanket. And you can double this up if it's really cold. That just protects these little seedlings and even as they get a little bit bigger so that the fluctuation changes aren't as bad. You'll be amazed at how much this little bit of protection helps your little seedlings. At times, I've even left the frost blanket on for a couple days at a time. If we ever get snow or anything like that, that just helps protect them that much more. But then if we have a nice sunny day, it's a good idea to remove that cover and then put it back on at night so that they do get that full amount of sunshine to develop a good crown. One of the most common problems with broccoli is the cabbage looper moth. It's the little white moth that you see flying around in most gardens and it'll come in and lay its eggs on the underside of your broccoli plants. And then you'll see munching going on and the little caterpillar develops and starts to just devastate your crop. So you need to get these picked off quickly or control it with either a BT or a spinosad. You can also use a floating row cover to protect your plants. So as soon as you get these planted, you'll want to cover this with this floating row cover and make sure you secure all sides because those little moths can sneak in there and before you know it they've devastated your crop. So you can cover this up really nice and tight and make sure that you have a hoop so that it's not down tight on them so that it gives the little plants some room to grow. Another problem that can affect your broccoli crop is club root and it just looks like a tuberous growth on the broccoli's root system and it just makes it to where your broccoli plants can't take up the nutrients and water that it actually needs. And this is more problematic in acidic soils and so you can combat this problem early on by just adding some lime to your soil before you actually plant your broccoli plants. If you live in a warmer climate like we do here, there's definitely some varieties that do better for these climates. Bell Star and Imperial are excellent. I like to grow these for our nursery here for our gardeners in this area for better success. Now this is another reason why you might want to do your own starts because these aren't commonly found. So you can definitely find these by seeds, get these started earlier. If you live in that warm climate, you might want to try these out. If you found this helpful, give us a thumbs up Hit the bell and subscribe for more great gardening advice. You're now on the road to success with your broccoli. Till next time, I'll see you in the next episode.